All right, guys, welcome back to the channel here. We are going to be doing some repairs on electrical today. And this is the same O2ZR600. Now, I'm not sure if you can see in the background here where my hand is at the top of the screen, but this goes to the hand warmer switch. And as you can see, I mean, when you get used sleds like this, I mean, sometimes they're just hacked up. I mean, I got one piece right here and then two other pieces and they weren't even plugged in correctly. So, um, yeah, what we're going to do is go ahead and clean up all these plugs. I had a spare handle bar that had a switch on it, so I just ended up chopping this end of the switch off. And what I'm going to do is just go ahead and splice them together, do a little bit of soldering, a little bit of heat shrink, and um, go ahead and get this buttoned up and then uh, start the sled up and give it a test run. See, uh, see if the, uh, the handlebars heat up like they should, where the hand grips are. So, pretty much basic tools here. I just have a 40 watt Radio Shack run of the mill soldering gun. And then I got some soldering iron. I have a couple different sizes of heat shrink here, which you can get in these packs. And you can get them at any local hardware store or the big box stores. And then I got a razor. And like I said, these little wire cutters and snippers. And what I'm going to do is solder the ends. First, I'm going to solder the ends, get everything cleaned up, and then solder the ends by themselves just to put solder on them. And you can put them together, heat them back up, and then they just stick together. And these will get slipped on and over the wires and then heat trunk on. And then this piece right here is going to get slipped on before everything and go over the entire group of wires. All right, so let's get started. Clip off all the old junk. This big piece will get slipped on above and beyond all that. What I'll do is I'll keep most of this on here and then I'll just cut a good section of it open so I can get it out of the way. So we'll get that opened and we'll just bend it, get it out of the way. Let me make sure these are big enough actually. I mean, these go around it, but now let me see if I might want to get some bigger ones. I want to make sure that there's enough room so that when you do go to slip these on over the soldering points, that they'll slip over it easily enough. Then we'll take these and just cut them in half. And we'll go ahead and strip these real quick. And you don't need a whole lot of the wire showing, just enough to where you can get a good fusion there between the two solder points. And this is just for reference, that's uh, right about a quarter inch. Okay, so I got these set up right here to accept the solder. There's those three. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and do the switch. I went ahead and heated these up pretty well. It seems like there's a coating on them that doesn't like to accept the uh, the solder very well. And this is solder that does have flux in the middle. Um, you can try using a soldering flux as well, just to give it a little bit of extra help. Like I said, you don't need a ton of solder on there. All right, so that is all three. You want to make sure that these are cooled down enough to where when you slip these on, they don't start to shrink up on you. Just push this down as far as you can. OK, 
Okay, we're just going to go ahead and heat these up one at a time. So now we got all three of them soldered together. Want to make sure they're cool enough. And then you can go ahead and slip the heat shrinks on over each one of them, making sure to cover well enough over each soldering point. You know, one thing that I've even seen people do is use bulb grease over them. Dielectric grease which will insulate them and keep the water out. Alright so I'm gonna go ahead and use some of this dielectric grease here. I am actually going to just cover these real quick. Doesn't have to be a big glob. Okay, now that we got the dielectric grease on there, we're going to go ahead and slip these heat shrink pieces over top of each one. So I'm to make sure that's completely cooled off. That's pretty good. Then we'll just straighten all these out. And then what we're going to do is slip this over everything. Just like that. Make sure that you overlap the top section is what I like to do. And then slip over the bigger piece of heat shrink. and hit that with some heat. Make sure you got both ends covered. And that is how you splice in some wires properly. You don't wanna just twist this stuff up, guys. When you twist it up, and then just hit it with some electrical tape. Sure, it might last for a little bit, but that stuff can come undone. You can get shorts. You know, who wants to start a fire on your sled? You know, so just do things right the first time. Put a little bit of work in the first time, and you won't have to worry about it again. So, all right. So we'll go ahead and plug this into terminal here. All right guys, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and test to see if the repair on the handlebar warmer switch worked. So I have a digital digital temp gun and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and see where we start off. So we are between uh, 34 on one side and like 42 on the other side.
just turn the switch on. So it looks like the right hand side, the thumb throttle side, is heating up. I got about 65 degrees. The other side's not heating up for some reason. So I'm going to have to check into that. All right, guys. So I tore into the reason why I thought this was uh, the handle hand warmer wasn't working on this left hand side. So what I did is I went back to the shop manual and... Um, checked out the chassis electrical troubleshooting guide and got the ohm readings for the heating elements and sure enough when i tested it which is what i should have done before i even attached that other plug i should have tested to see if it even worked well this is the one that was on there um, i already cut the end of it off again and after i pulled the this is actually from another chat from another well, these are another set of handlebars so what you do is you just stick your air your air gun in this end here and it fills that fills the uh the grip up with air and then you can just pretty much slide it off with a little bit of persuasion so i started looking as i ended up heating or what i did is i attached a battery 12 volt battery up to the two leads for each because I tested each element because as you can see here the yellow wire is the supply line and the other two are the ground and what will happen is you have your constant supply and then to ground your low heat heating element you switch it to low and it supplies this black line ground and so it'll heat up that smaller element well when you do high heat it'll ground out the it'll complete the circuit through the green wire and that heats the bigger element so i didn't have any continuity when the bigger element and so i took the the handle grip off and i started looking and i found this right here and you could barely see it but what i did is i all i did is i just touched it and i saw it spark and so I peeled away the plastic above it, and then I put a... I just took, took a pair of needle nose pliers and jumped those two, and the elements started getting warm. So now what I'm doing, I have that off, and I have this other set of handlebars. I just figured I'd show you guys how I'm getting this element off here. And it's, it's pretty simple. You just have to be careful with it. Um, I was actually... I was heating it up, but what I could do is touch a touch the uh, touch a battery to it and get it warmed up that way. I was using this big 12 volt battery here, so you just use each post, touch the green to the negative, and the yellow to the positive. Be careful. Yeah, it's already starting to heat up. This one seemed like it started to heat up real fast, so keep that on there. I'll let the whole thing warm up, and then that should make it a lot easier to peel this thing off. And just be careful, you don't want to break it. So just keep it straight, no kinks. Oh yeah, it's getting warm already. So I know this one works, so I'm going to go ahead and take this one off and put it on the 600s handlebars. Oh yeah, that's heating up real good. Already. Good deal. Just sucks I cut that off of there. I could have just tested the other one and then tested this one and then been <laughs> that much further ahead, but oh well. Is what it is. Lesson learned. Failure's not a failure if a lesson from it's learned, right?
All right, so that should be good for now. I'm going to take this off and then peel this. I want to make sure you peel it straight. Hopefully most of the glue will come off with it, the adhesive. So it looks like there's roughly about a quarter inch space in between each one of these wines. like most of this is coming off with it that's good all right last little bit there we go awesome that's it so I'm gonna take you over to the sled and We'll get this put on and then we'll, or maybe I'll solder these up first. You now, if you guys want to test these, you're looking for zero ohms on the big heating element, which is going to be the yellow to green or as close to it. That's seven. And then you want around, says 14. Or the other one that's 12.8 so you got continuity and you got resistance limited resistance I don't know if this will be enough to cover. The 
next thing is to go over to the sled and get this thing put back on. All right, so we're getting ready to put this heating element on. And the first thing I did was slip this wire through the slot that's down here. And then if it doesn't seem like it wants to fit, just move the wires around until they go, you know, bunched up to flattened out. And then you can slip it up in there and then just pull the whole thing through. And that way it'll brace it while you're putting it on. Uh, the next step, this actually still has quite a bit of the adhesive on it. So I am going to not alter it very much. Only thing really I'm going to do is put some electrical tape on the end here, just like they had it. Initially. Wrap that around a few times. Nice and tight. I want to stretch it a little. And then just rip it on the bottom. And what I like to do is take a little tiny bit of super glue. Put it right in the bottom of the right on the seam of where the, the tape ends. And then that will help to not let the uh, electrical tape come unraveled. So you just want to be careful when you're putting this stuff back on. You don't want to yank on it, twist it, kink it. Want to lay flat. Just a little tiny smear on the end of that tape. That stops the tape, the electrical tape from coming undone. I'm sure many of you know that when you put electrical tape, especially if you put it on cold or you just don't wrap it right or things aren't clean, the tape doesn't stick real well. And it'll tend to unravel. So I think the next thing that I'm going to do before I put the... Let's, let's go ahead and make sure that we are looking at good voltages still. I'm sorry, resistance readings here. Okay, it's supposed to be right around eight. So we're at seven, we're looking good. And the warm coil is gonna be right around 14. So we're good. And the other thing that I did was 
uh, repaired this because they had two of these wires were just cut and shortened and then they just twisted them together and they were all corroded so I ended up cutting a <clears throat> I had some trailer wiring left over brand new stuff and I ended up cutting a piece of brown and a piece of green and the green and white one here was still connected so I cut that one and then uh, trimmed the wires and then I put two correct length pieces of wire in there and then soldered it all together closed it all up shielded it and it's good to go so this is for the switch for the thumb warmer and the other thing that I did that I noticed was that the thumb warmer here was wrapped with a bunch of tape I think I threw a good portion of it out but it was wrapped all the way around because of the heating element here and I tested it the heating element is fine so what I did is I ended up cleaning it all up and scraped off the goop on the back side of this well it's still a little wet but and then um, I ended up just putting a couple da a couple dabs of super glue one here and then on the back the back side in between the thumb throttle itself and the heating element and then what I did is I just pushed it in there for held it for 60 seconds it stuck and so I ended up using mixing up some uh, JB weld and put that on the back there doesn't look very pretty but you know what didn't really look that good from the factory either so I mean it still kind of sticks out so maybe I'll hit it with like some paint or something to blend it in or whatever but yeah so that's drying right now that was the other thing and uh, so the rest of this is good to go I shouldn't have any problems thumb warmer should work and both hand warmers now so the next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and hook a battery up to this heating element and that will heat the element up and then help to uh, reset the glue on there 12 volt battery out again positive lead to the yellow wire, negative lead to the green. So we'll give that a minute to start to warm up. Oh yeah, feels good. Then you just wanna go around and make sure you got a real nice, what'll happen is you can see the glue here and just like packaging tape or uh, scotch tape or anything like that, when you press it down, you can tell when it really starts to stick. So that's what you want to do is just go around and get as much as that stuck. And uh, it'll, what'll happen is it'll darken. And it'll kind of like gloss instead of being translucent. So we'll let that go for a little bit longer. I mean, probably what I could do is just put a couple little dabs. Super glue. And it's cool because I can't remember the name of this effect. But even though this is on a slant downward, and gravity's pulling against it. Watch what happens. <laughs> it gets sucked like up into the crack. And it's the same thing when you're putting like, because I used to be in aquariums and stuff. And when you put a, two pieces of acrylic together, when you're making an acrylic tank, it is the same thing. It's pretty sweet. Okay. Sorry about all the bouncing around. Just sucks it right up in there. That's so cool. So I think we'll what we'll do is we will unplug the battery. And then once that's cooled off, we'll come back and put that hand grip on. All right, this thing is all cooled off.
is it? She's all buttoned up. So we'll go ahead and uh, give it one more test run and hit it with the digital thermometer gun and make sure that they're both heating up and everything's good to go. Right around 40 degrees on both of them. So the maximum that we saw on both of these, let's see. Seventy-eight degrees. That one's eighty-four, look like. Eighty-seven, eighty-eight. So yeah. They're working good. Even the thumb throttle. That sucker was getting up there. Look at that. So everything's working good. Should be a nice little sled. Front end did get whacked a little. Probably the other thing I'm going to do is check the alignment as well because it might be tracking really bad. But alright guys, just wanted to show you how uh, it's not too troubling um, to fix any electrical issues as far as your heaters go. Uh, definitely possible to fix them without having to get new handlebars. So just figured I'd show you guys that. So if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Uh, go ahead and like the video, comment, drop in, say hello. Make sure you hit the alert bell so you're notified of future updates on my channel. So if you guys know anybody else that likes this type of content, please feel free to share on social media and networking with family and friends. So we'll see you in the next video. So come on back. Take care, guys. God bless.